Hey guys, I'm Bones and uh, I'm a narrowboater and I live on this narrowboat crucible. I'm also a musician, you may have guessed, and uh, on the side I do a bit of photography as well. I um, am in a touring band, Morass of Molasses, check them out. And I earn money through that. I'm also a sound engineer and I put on gigs myself. People look at me and kind of go, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, you live in a narrowboat. <laughs> so when I say it, they kind of, they instantly put the two things together and they go big beard, narrow boat, yeah, that makes complete sense. The beginning of the dream, if you like, that was quite a long time ago now, actually. I remember I was just walking down, I think it was Basingstoke Canal, and I saw a narrow boat, and it was just one of those moments where you kind of like, ooh, I quite like the look of that. That looks like that might be quite a cool thing to do. And I guess some seed was planted in the back of my mind then. And then I um, got to a point in my life where I think I definitely started to feel like I wanted to ch a change. And it just happened to coincide with my granddad deciding that, um, like a lot of old people, he has some money and he wanted to pass it on. But he didn't really want to wait until he was dead. So he basically gave me, my brother and my sister, our inheritance early. Now, it, I looked into getting a house, but it wasn't quite enough, really, because <laughs> everybody knows how difficult it is to get on the housing ladder nowadays. But then I guess that seed that had been there from the narrowboat started to turn into like a slight bud. I did a woodwork evening class. I did a, a plumbing evening class and an electrics evening class. And they kind of gave me an initial thing, but most of what I learned, YouTube. Like, watch so many YouTube videos of people that were fitting out their narrowboats. I've actually been living on it, I'd say a year and a half, getting near a year and a half. So on the actual canals and rivers. But before that, I lived on it in the marina. Okay, so this is the outside of Crucible, uh, my boat. And she's 65 foot long and just under seven foot wide. Um, as you can see, it's kind of a interesting sort of matte black with this sort of uh, ox blood color. So yeah, and then we've got these uh, solar panels on the top, flexible ones, so they uh, kind of don't stick up as much. Tunnel light, horn, and that's basically the aerial for my internet there. So uh, if I walk along the gunnel, these are obviously these are the hatches. You inside, we're going to go inside in a minute, and uh, you'll be able to see all this from the inside, and it all looks very different from the inside. But this though, I mean, look at this amazing field that I live in usually, sometimes, surrounded by cows. So that's the bow of the boat, and this is the stern of the boat. So yeah, this is the stern of the boat. As you can see, like, because it's winter, I use it a lot for storage. In the summer, it tends to be a bit clearer, so you kind of can hang out on it a little bit better. Over here is my canoe. As an aesthetic, as you can kind of see, my aesthetic idea was, um, Haunted ship meets old pub, and I think I've kind of got that. And I had this sort of idea of sort of this dark wood idea, and this is actually um, wood stain. It's actually the kind of stain that you use on decking and stuff in the garden. Um, but and then I had the copper and the brass and that sort of this, sort of this very oldy worldy feel that I wanted to go for. I made a point of trying to save money where I could, but not scrimp like things that were worth spending money on, I spent money on. So I did spend quite a bit of money on things like batteries. I've got lithium batteries and my solar panels, they're quite expensive solar panels. So I didn't scrimp on those because I knew I needed to rely on them. But like the wood, I basically begged, stilled and borrowed. And it was like, that's, this is um, everything from pallets to old scaffolding boards, um, wood that people were throwing away and all of that. And once it was stained, it just all looked the same, didn't matter. Um, and so I think I saved a lot of money in the actual fit out from just getting a lot of, uh, I'd say 80% of the wood on this boat, maybe even near 90 is free. So I think the total for the boat, which boat is always uncomfortable telling you the final total, but let's just say it was around 45K, around that. And that wasn't, some. Uh, a lot of that was money that after I'd got the inheritance and bought the shell, then I'd already been saving for a few years and then basically any extra money I had just went straight into the boat. I didn't have a lot of fun in those two years, if you know what I mean, uh, because it was all just the focus of the boat and uh, yeah. But since then I've had it valued and it's worth 70 to 80K 
so already so you know i mean but i'd like to point out that i didn't actually do it for an investment and people do like to talk about the money side of it quite a lot and actually it's probably the least important side to me because people like i built a home i didn't like acquire an asset you know it's this is somewhere i want to live for a long time i'm not already thinking about who i'm going to sell it to so obviously living on a narrowboat is off grid by its nature yeah completely off grid here as you can probably see around the boat is lots of wood because one of my main heating sources is my stove and i also cook on my stove what you start to realize on a narrowboat is that your resources are finite yeah so i have a water tank and whatever's in that water tank is what i've got for you know everything you know it's not like mains water it's i've got to be careful i don't ever leave a tap running you know i'm always trying to sort of be conscious of water which i think has actually been really good for me like i think i was too complacent about resources when i lived in the flat and now i'm like very aware of my consumption and very aware of like kind of where i'm at with stuff and you just can't take anything for granted i think living on a narrow boat can't help but um give you a different perspective um, because you are right in the center of nature like by definition you are surrounded by like i look out of one of my portholes and there's a field and look out my other my portholes and it's a river so i'm literally in this liminal space between these two things surrounded by all these geese and all these birds outdoors has always been something that i've loved and you just feel closer to it on a narrow boat it's it's only uh, just beyond there and you can hear it a lot of the time there's an awareness that you have of the nature around you that is different from living in a house especially living in a house in a, a city or something like that the peace that you get on the river is something that i don't take for granted at all now i think okay so i guess i better do the tour of the inside of the boat now so uh, the first thing you notice when you come in is you got all these little things and this thing is actually quite important it's my batteries and so i can check here got 98 percent battery got loads of battery left in there is the electrical cupboard now i know the more geeky among you would probably really like to look in there but it's not that interesting trust me um, i've got my fridge which is a 12 volt fridge so not running off mains electricity just some general shelving and stuff like that. I mean, we are technically in the galley area now of my boat, and this is a, a nice sink. I'm quite proud of my sink. I tap. And uh, just some cupboards. All these I built from scratch, basically, and it's got all my food and stuff in it. So, yeah. Then, obviously, we kind of go through the galley and uh, enter the sort of more sort of cooking living room area here. This is... Uh, some little things here are worth probably pointing out and these little things I uh, used to dry stuff on these little almost like racks that I made like this get, gets quite warm here because of the stove and it's good at drying stuff this is the living room area very comfy nice sofa it's also a bed as well so that's pretty good here I've got my stove which is kind of like what I like to call the heart of the boat and um, Essie I mean, it's made by Essie, but I call her Essie as well, because it sounds like, sounds like a good name for her. And uh, at the moment, oh look, there's a kettle boiling right now. Look at that, how convenient. I have a cup of tea at some point. So yeah, this is a, kind of like a, a, a range type stove. As you can see with the lid there, it's kind of familiar to people that are used to ranges. And it's only wood, doesn't take coal at all. So it means that I get through a fair bit of wood on it, but as long as I keep stocked up, everything's fine. And something that's a little bit different from stoves that usually are on narrow boats is, as well as it being more like a range so that you can use it on the top and it has a graduated heat on the top, it also has an oven underneath. Now at the moment I actually, rather than cooking anything in the oven, I'm actually drying out wood right now in the oven because <laughs> it's actually really good for drying out wood. But yeah, that's like one of my favourite things about the boat and probably one of the most expensive things about the boat as well, I should add. This is where I chill out when people come out to hang over and they also can sleep on that if they want because it folds out into a double bed. This is my desk. This is where I sit to work. This is where I make a lot of my YouTube videos um, sitting here and uh, do a lot of piece to camera stuff here. And you can see that he's starting to bring in some little bits of colour here onto the boat 
and using the classic trick of making things look bigger by putting mirrors everywhere. Everybody does it, right? Interesting story about this cupboard, actually. This, uh, my granddad actually built this cupboard like in the 50s and uh, sort of gifted it to me and then I sort of made it fit in with the rest of it, stained it in, put it to the uh, wall and just painted it a bit orange. But yeah, this is a quite old cupboard. Thanks, granddad. And then we come into the bathroom area. A lot of people tend to notice the sink, the teak sink, they quite like that. And obviously the uh, shower as well, which is a quite lovely brass shower. First time I'd ever tiled anything as well. I was quite proud of myself. Did a lot of research about that. And what everybody I know is interested in, obviously, the separating toilet. So I have a separating toilet and Sometimes called a composting toilet, but no actual composting technically goes on there, really. It just separates stuff. And that's where I'm gonna leave that. Cool, and then we come through. This area is kind of what I like to call the chill room or vinyl room, as it were. And it's quite nice, especially in summer, I can open up these, get a lot of fresh air in here. Just sit down, chill out, maybe have a beer or something with some mates and listen to some music and it's there. Quite a nice little room separate from everything else. Or maybe just come in here to read or something. And then the final room, the bedroom. Tend to spend quite a bit of time in the bedroom uh, in the winter because it can be quite cozy in here. But it's actually interesting because it's the furthest place away from the stove and so it actually uh, heats up the slowest. But then I don't always want my bedroom to be really warm because, uh, you know, end up getting too hot in the end. Yeah, and then that's the end of the boat. That's where I started the tour, right out there. And that's it. That's my boat. So I think something about narrow boating as well is that um, there's a romanticism attached to it. And uh, especially when people first come on my boat, uh, they're like, oh, wow, this is amazing. I want a narrow boat. And I'm like, yeah, it's cool. But and it is. I love my boat, it's amazing, and I love narrowboat life, but there are a lot of things that you don't necessarily think of, and uh, I kind of have had to adapt, I think is the way of it, like I have to park my van quite far away, and so every day, if I was to go to my van every day, which I don't always, but if I was to, it, every single day it's half an hour walk to my van and half an hour walk back, now that's not much, but when it's lots of snow, when it's really cold, when it's three o'clock in the morning and you're just coming back from tour, sometimes those things get a little bit old. And the fact that obviously I can't, oh, I left that thing in my car. <laughs> you know, it's half an hour walk away. So I'm always carrying lots of bags of everything backwards and forwards, heavy bags, because I just try and make that journey as few times as possible. Sometimes in the summer, I do it in the canoe because that's a little bit easier. Uh, but I think that that is, it's not a chore, but it is, it is an element to it, is you can't live in the middle of nowhere and have all the benefits of that without living in, in the middle of nowhere and having the negative aspects to that, which is that you're usually far away from modernity. Now, luckily, there's a, a community around here of people, so I can reach into that for help if I need it, and, and we all help each other out as boaters, which is really nice. And that helps to nullify some of the negative aspects of it, especially to do with isolation, which is something which I just never thought about um, because I was so into like the idea of building this boat and all of the sort of the adventures I'd have on it. That has been something which has required some adaptation and kind of something which I didn't give enough gravity to, I think, when I first thought about having a narrow boat. Being a musician and living on a narrow boat is like in some ways they're perfectly matched uh, because uh, I have this kind of sporadic income and because obviously there is, I haven't really talked about this much, but the way I live on a narrow boat, this is not necessarily the same for everybody else, but is kind of a um, lower cost way of living. And so it suits that lifestyle a little bit better. Uh, but also I think that uh, being on a narrow boat can be conducive to being creative at times. Being in this confined space um, like has its positives and negatives. The negatives are that, you know, it's small and you can't have a lot of possessions. But also it means that there's not necessarily a lot of clutter. 
So that kind of gives you room to think, gives you room to create. And actually, interestingly, the name of my boat, Crucible, uh, absolutely nothing to do with snooker before anybody says, um, is about alchemy. And it is about um, the mixing of ideas. And to me, that's why I name my boat Crucible. It continues to be a place where I create and I blend ideas together and I create songs and, you know, and sometimes even record songs on here as well. So I think, again, people are kind of enchanted slightly by the idea of it. But then the, rea the idea of narrowboating and the reality of narrowboating are two very different things. And the reality is that you are adopting a different way of life. Part of what makes it interesting at times is its differences. Um, yes, there are challenges. Yes, there are times when there are things you have to do to maintain the boat that you wouldn't necessarily have to do in a flat or a house, that you're just like, oh God, do I have to really go and get water again? Or, you know, if it's really cold and you have to put the fire on again, and, you know, it's not all, roses but at the same time you kind of you, at some point you make that decision you like is this worth it and i think for me the case is definitely yes it is still far more things that i love about it than that i don't love about it there are plenty of times when i felt like giving up so i completely understand why it wouldn't be for everybody because it does it is annoying sometimes i think it is it is um Sometimes when I go around and visit people that live in houses and I just flush the toilet and I'm like, wow, it just goes away. You don't have to deal with that. Or like, they're just like, like for, for example, like when I do my washing, I have to do it at that laundrette and that's like a 40 minute walk that way with a massive backpack on. Whereas people just walk through into their kitchen and put their washing in their washing machine. And so it's like certain everyday things are, are more complex. And I think you kind of can accept that and that's part of it or other people are just it's not good and and yes of course you get narrow boats that have all the mod cons and they're massive narrow boat and some narrow boats you can walk onto and it's like a luxury flat and you're like holy shit. but you know this is not a luxury flat you have dreams don't you and i think uh i love my boat and i think the, I've made myself uh, a home and so there are things there that I've never done before in my life. I, for the first time in my life, I created a space that was my own and it was the way I wanted it to be. Up until then, I'd always lived in rented accommodation. I could do very little to change my environment. But the first time I built a space that I loved and I wanted to live in. And so in some ways, one of the biggest lessons from making a boat was the fact that I can do that. I can create a space that, that I want to live in. And interestingly, that's kind of made me want to do it again. <laughs> so if you're interested and you're still with us, um, if you want to check me out and check out my YouTube channel, um, it's called My Narrowboat Life. Or on Instagram, it's called Follow My Narrowboat Life. Just type those in and you'll find me and you'll probably see my beard, my hat, because it will pop up pretty quick. And yeah, yeah, and follow, watch my videos and yeah, join the journey with me and see what my life's like, really. Cheers for watching.